Thank you. Next, I would like to welcome Dr. Seema Khan, a professor of surgery at Northwestern Medicine in Chicago, Illinois. Dr. Khan will be presenting our next abstract, LBA2, a randomized phase three trial of systemic therapy plus early local therapy versus systemic therapy alone in women with de novo stage four breast cancer. A trial of the ACOG, ACRAN Research Group, E2108. Good afternoon, friends and colleagues at ESCO and attendees around the globe. My name is Seema Khan. I'm a professor of surgery at Northwestern University of Chicago, and I have the distinct pleasure and great honor of presenting on behalf of my colleagues at ECOG Akron and from collaborative cooperative groups in North America, a randomized trial phase three trial of the value of early local therapy for the intact primary tumor in patients with metastatic breast cancer, ECOG Akron 2108. I would like to thank the program committee for selecting our abstract for presentation in this plenary session. I would also like to take a moment to remember our friend and colleague, Dr. Larry Solin, who passed away earlier this year. Dr. Solin was a leader and innovator in the field of radiation oncology. His rigorous and insightful evaluation of clinical evidence, his important contributions to the development of breast conserving therapy, and his perennial excitement about ideas that would improve the lives of our patients are well remembered. We miss his presence, particularly in the presentation of data from this trial, where he contributed so much. About 6% of newly diagnosed breast cancer patients present with stage 4 disease and an intact primary tumor, or IPT. Local regional treatment for the IPT is hypothesized to improve survival based on retrospective analyses. This is an, this is an example of a meta-analysis of 19 retrospective studies showing a pooled hazard ratio of 0.69, favoring the use of surgical resection of the primary tumor in stage 4 disease. But these studies were biased. Women receiving surgery were younger, had smaller tumors, were more likely to have hormone receptor positive disease, and a lower metastatic burden. Two randomized trials have been completed and published, testing the value of local regional therapy in stage 4 breast cancer with conflicting results. The first started at Tata Memorial Hospital in Mumbai, India, and was reported by Dr. Badbe and colleagues in 2017. The second, through the Turkish Federation, MF0701, was reported by Dr. Saran in 2018. There was no observed survival advantage with early local regional therapy in the trial from India. The survival curves were overlapping. The hazard ratio was close to null. Um, the Turkish Federation trial, when analyzed at five years, did favor early local regional therapy with an absolute overall survival difference of 17%. Our trial opened in 2011. The last patient was enrolled in 2015. We, we recruited women with de novo stage 4 breast cancer. They were registered. They received optimal systemic therapy based on patient and disease features in accordance with current guidelines. Those who did not progress at distant sites following four to eight months of therapy were randomized to either continued systemic therapy alone or early local therapy with continuation of systemic therapy following this. All participants were followed for five years. The details of the early local therapy paralleled uh, guidelines for the treatment of women with non-metastatic breast cancer and included complete tumor resection with free surgical margins, post-operative radiotherapy, per standard of care. We were asked in 2013 to amend our statistical design because of slow accrual. The new statistical design uh, planned that 368 women would be enrolled, 258 would be randomized, and total information available on 52 deaths would yield 85% power to detect a 19% difference 
in three-year overall survival rates. Our primary endpoint was overall survival. Important secondary endpoints included time to local, re local regional disease progression, health-related quality of life, the absolute burden of circulating tumor cells, and the intent to collect biological samples, which we did. We registered 390 women, of whom 134 dropped out at step following step one, 65 because of progression of disease, 25 because of withdrawal, and 28 for various other reasons. Thus, 256 women were randomized, 65.6% .6 of the registered population, 131 to the continued systemic therapy arm, and 125 to the early local therapy arm. Efficacy analysis included all randomized patients. The overall crossover rate between arms was 14%, while the planned crossover rate was 15%. Participant characteristics are shown here and in subsequent slides. They are organized similarly with the first data column showing those who were registered, the second column showing those who were not randomized for the reasons I mentioned, and the third showing the randomized population. The median age was similar. The race ethnicity distribution was also similar with no significant differences. Two thirds were postmenopausal, and the distribution of breast cancer subtype was as expected, with 54.2, 58.5, and 59.6 percent of patients uh, having her hormone receptor positive and her two negative disease. The distribution of triple negative breast cancer differed a little between the non-randomized group and the randomized group with a higher proportion progressing while on initial treatment. The trend for the HER2 positive uh, patients was in the opposite direction, consistent with the known greater sensitivity of HER2 positive breast cancer to systemic therapy. The overall distribution pattern, however, was similar and was not significantly different. With regard to the distribution across metastatic sites, bone-only disease was seen in about a third of patients, whereas 40% had both bone and visceral disease among those who progressed and among those who were randomized, uh, not significantly different. With regard to initial systemic therapy, chemotherapy with or without a HER2-directed agent was used in more than half the participants. The use of HER2-directed therapy was um, determined on the basis of HER2 testing of the primary tumor. Both endocrine and chemotherapy was used in a small minority of patients. The primary tumor characteristics were initially categorized as lower local disease burden, T1 to 3 and N0 to 1 versus higher burden, T4 and or N2 or 3. Uh, looked at this way, the distribution was similar among those who progressed and dropped out during um, the initial systemic therapy and those who were randomized. However, looking more closely at the tumor characteristics, it is clear that direct invasion into skin and the presence of skin nodules was more frequent in the group that progressed, and this difference was significant. With regard to continued systemic therapy and early local therapy arms random by randomized uh, groups, uh, the median age was similar, the race ethnicity distribution was similar, and the burden of disease with regard to single versus multiple organ systems involved was similar, as was the distribution of breast cancer subtypes. Among the 125 women who were randomized to early local therapy, 109 received surgery, and of those, 87 achieved uh, free surgical margins. Uh, 74 patients received local regional treatment, as I mentioned, according to standards of care for non-metastatic disease. Of the 14 patients who did not receive surgical dissection, 
nine declined, two had progressive disease, one was related to a physician decision, one lacked insurance, and the cause was unknown in three patients. In the systemic therapy arm, only 25 women received surgery, 13 in the year following randomization, and 12 at a later time, all for palliation. The overall survival results are shown here. Um, in December of 2019, 121 patients had died, which represented 80% of full information. Median follow-up time was 53 months. Median survival was 54 months. The survival curves overlap completely. They are superimposable. The log rank p-value for difference between arms is 0 0.63 and the hazard ratio is 1.09. So there is no hint here of an advantage in terms of survival with the use of early local regional therapy for the primary site. Progression-free survival results are very similar with a p-value of 0 0.4 and overlapping curves. At the cutoff date, 178 patients had progressed or had died, 89 on each arm. Looking at overall survival by tumor subtype, there were only 20 patients with triple negative breast cancer who were randomized. In this small subset, uh, the hazard ratio was higher in those who were uh, randomized to early, system, early local therapy, and patients continuing systemic therapy um, mm -hmm. appeared to have an advantage, but the numbers are clearly too small to reach any conclusions. Uh, with regard to HER2 positive and hormone receptor positive HER2 negative disease, the survival outcomes are very similar to the main analysis with hazard ratios of 1.05 and 0.94 respectively. For local regional progression, we defined this differently in, uh, in patients on the continued systemic therapy arm since their primary tumor was still intact. Um, we looked for development of symptoms leading to a decision for local therapy. In the early local therapy arm, however, the tumor had been resected, so we looked for regional global progression uh, or the emergence of chest wall disease or an invasive breast cancer in breast recurrence, uh, depending on whether the initial procedure was mastectomy or breast conservation. The occurrence of distant progression did not preclude the reporting of later local regional recurrence or progression. We saw 43 local regional recurrences with a hazard ratio of 0.37. The rate in the early local therapy arm was 10%, that in the continued systemic therapy arm was 25.6%, so about two and a half times greater. This was, this was statistically significant. The Health-related quality of life was measured using the FACT-B trials outcome index as the primary endpoint. It was measured based on prorated aggregate score of 24 items from the FACT-B plus seven items that, specific, that were added specifically to measure local symptoms. The FACT-B TOI was significantly lower in patients receiving early local therapy at 18 months post-randomization. There was no significant difference between arms at other assessment time points, but it should be noted that there was a diminution in the amount of data available as the trial progressed. Uh, 206 women reported quality of life surveys at baseline, and by 30 months, this had decreased to 111. Uh, so these quality of life data are not quite as robust as we would have liked. We draw the following conclusions from these data. Early local therapy does not improve survival in patients with de novo metastatic breast cancer and an intact primary tumor. Although we saw a 2.5 fold higher risk of local disease progression without local regional therapy, the use of LRT for the primary site did not lead to improved quality of life. Therefore, based on available data, local regional treatment for the primary tumor should not be offered to women with stage 4 breast cancer with the expectation of the survival.
survival benefit. When systemic disease is well controlled with systemic therapy, but the primary site is progressing, as does happen occasionally, local regional treatment can be considered. I would also like to remind everyone that results from the Japanese clinical, on, uh, clinical oncology group 1017 trial are pending. Uh, this was a trial very similarly designed to E2108. Uh, the investigators have enrolled 507 patients and results are expected in May of 2022, two years from now. We look forward with great interest to those results. We would uh, we acknowledge that this um, trial was supported by the National Cancer Institute and the NCI Community Oncology Research Program uh, through ECOG Akron and the North American Cooperative Groups um, and included support from the Canadian Cancer Society. We would also like to thank all the women who participated in this trial and the breast cancer advocates who supported it, in particular Mary Lou Smith. And I thank you for your attention.